restrictions box. Uh, let's just let me just go over the rest of these because these are all very similar. Post, page, tag, category, and URI are all focused on access restrictions for content inside your installation of WordPress. So let's start with post. You'll see in this section there's a little tip here that says can't find your post IDs? Get WP Show IDs. I'm the author of this plugin. The WP Show IDs plugin is designed to put to place the IDs that are inside WordPress into a visual area. So if I was to go here and click on pages, I would see a list of those IDs over here rather than having to hover over the link. See if I hover over the link and I look down in the status bar, I will see it says post equals 36. That is telling me that this particular page has an ID inside WordPress of 36. Why is that important? Because I need to know what the ID is in order for me to protect it with S2 member. So the WP Show IDs plugin you can install just by going to plugins and add new, type in WP Show IDs, and that makes it simple. I really recommend that, particularly if you're installing it for a client, it makes it a lot easier, more user friendly. All right, let's go back to where we left off, back over to the S2 member general options. And go back down here to post access restrictions. Once I determine what the IDs of specific posts that I want to protect are, I can type those in here. So this is for level 0 or higher. So if I protect post ID 36, now let's just say for example I had two or three others. Let's say I had 211 and I had uh, post ID 895 and I had post ID 4. I would enter them in comma delimited fashion and what this tells us to remember is that these posts are now off limits unless you are logged in with at least a level zero or higher access. Now again, level zero in this, in this example we have configured as level zero and well, we've changed it now, but we configured it as member and this is premium member. And then we just dash these out. So level zero is anyone who just logs in, it's free to log in, and we're just calling them a member. We could have called them a free subscriber just to keep it standard, but I'm just wanting to show you an example here of how what, you know the flexibility of S2 members. So you can rename these if you prefer. So down here now we have these posts that require that level zero. So does this mean that it, these posts require payment? No, it just means that you have to have logged in you have to have registered for free and be logged in in order to access these four post IDs. Now, let's say we want to sell paid access to post ID 654 and 258 and 141. So if I enter those three post IDs here, these three post IDs will require level number one or higher. So how do you get a level number one access? The only way you can do that is if, going back up here to our configuration, is if you pay for a premium membership. So in order to give in order to allow a customer to to give to give the customer access you would need to provide them with a PayPal button that is configured for level one access and they would go through PayPal, come back and their account would be updated and they would now they would now be at level one. And then they would have access to these three posts and at level one they would also still have access to all of these because membership level access works incrementally. So you notice here it says level number zero or higher. So if, if I'm a level one member and I log in, I will have access to these three and these because I have level one. I'm higher than level zero, which means I can access anything that's underneath me. And that is true for these as well. So if I had level four, even though I'm, we're not using it in this example, if I had a level four, I could access all of these level one pages, or I'm sorry, posts, and I could access all of these level zero posts. Okay, so let's collapse this and move on down to page. Now page access restrictions work exactly the same way as post access restrictions. The only difference is that is, is the way they're classified within WordPress. It's the difference between a post or a page. So if, it, if you've created a page under pages, then you would use the page access restrictions. If you created a post, then you'd use post access restrictions. Starting with WordPress 3.0, some plugins and some themes implement what are called custom post types, where you might have another menu here that would be called something else, like it might say something along the lines of uh, photo or gallery entry. 
that would be considered a custom post type. And if you wanted to protect that, then you would use the post access restrictions. So post access restrictions work with posts, but they are also extendable by other plugins. And if you have another plugin that does that, then you would just protect that with the post access restrictions. And you can see that that is mentioned here, enabled custom post types. You just put the IDs for those in here. So this is all inclusive for posts and for custom post types. Okay, moving on down to tag access restrictions. Now this is my favorite way to protect content. And you're probably asking, well, why? Because I don't like tags, or you know, maybe you haven't used tags in the past, or maybe you use tags to categorize things. The reason I prefer tag level access is because, as you've probably uh, been guessing here, or been, or probably wondering here, well, how am I going to remember to come back and enter an ID every time I want to protect a new section of content, or if I publish content on a daily basis, do I keep having to come back here and enter IDs all the time? Well, we're working on some more advanced solutions for this in the long term, but in the short term, what you can do is use tag level access to help achieve uh, an easier method of protection. So here on level zero, let's say I could protect the tag that would be called members, or I might call it members only. And then here on level one, I would have a tag called premium members oops, only. So what this means now, with this configuration, I could just empty out all of my page access restrictions, empty out all of my post access restrictions, and not even put any IDs here at all. Instead, all I do is whenever I publish a new post, I give it a tag if I want it protected. If I want it protected from level 0 or higher, I give it the tag members only. And if I want it protected from level 1 or higher, I give it the tag premium members only. So you can see how you can extend this out and do all sorts of things. You'll also notice that there's this all option over here. So if I change this to all, then any post that has a tag of any kind will be protected. That protects all tags. Now this is valid, the, the all specification is valid for all of these. You can put all in, in the form of, so I could protect all page IDs here. That works. And, and also, just to note here, this protects all pages in this example for page access restrictions. If I type in all, that protects all pages that exist now as well as any pages that I create in the future. So that's another way to kind of uh, short circuit and make it easier to protect massive amounts of content. Uh, I prefer the tags myself. I think that that is the easiest way to do it. However, it doesn't always work. For example, by default, WordPress cannot apply a tag to a page. There's plugins out there, though, that can make that possible. Uh, so if you really would like to use tags, you can check into that. Um, or if you're only protecting posts, then you really don't even need that. Anyway, uh, you can use these other levels as well. Uh, and there's some additional examples here. Let's move on down to category access. Now, category access is, is a little more different, and it's more broad. Uh, with category level access, look, for example, let's say I protect the category ID 54. Well, what that does is it protects the category archive view. So if, if, you're, if your theme has a category view where you click a link and it takes you to, let's say, the category flowers, and it has a post, has, has one, two, three, four, a big list of posts within that category, if you protect the category, that view would be protected. So none of the posts in that category would be able to be seen. So protecting a category protects the category archive view, and it also protects automatically any post that is within that category, no matter whether, no matter how deeply it's nested. So if you were to create a category called flowers, and then a subcategory, and another subcategory, and another subcategory, and then you put a post in one of those subcategories, if you protected the main category, all of the posts, including the permalinks for each of those posts, are all protected. And, and so, for example, you could have 350 posts inside the category flowers, and if that ID is 54 and you protect it here, you've just protected all 150 of those posts in one shot by just putting in 54 right there. Okay, so let's move on down to URI level access restrictions. Now this is a bit more advanced, and it's, it's intended mostly for when you have other plugins running with WordPress, that create URLs within your site that may not actually be related or directly associated with a specific post or a page within the content management system for WordPress. 
That was pretty lengthy. So let me restate that a little bit. For example, if you create a set of posts and pages, then you can go up here and you can look at those pages and those posts, and you can find their IDs. But what's what happens if you have, for example, BuddyPress installed, where BuddyPress, in conjunction with the BuddyPress compatible theme, generates URLs that might contain things like activity or groups or forums, for example. Those are not directly associated with a post or a page, and so the way you protect those is using URI level access here. And just to clarify, this is a URL where it starts with HTTP, including the file name, and this is a URI. It just has the path. So it doesn't include the domain name. It's only what comes after the domain name. That's a URI, and that's what's relative here. That's what's important here. So in BuddyPress, for example, there are around maybe 10 or 11 different subsections of a BuddyPress installation that contain the word activity, this fragment in them. So if I just put in the activity fragment, if that fragment is found anywhere in the path of the file, then S2 member will require that you have level zero access to access that. So if you wanted to, to, to shut down BuddyPress to, to, uh, to anyone who is not logged in, then you would just put all of those URI slugs here, in other words, and that would uh, force S2 member to protect those specific areas of your site, whether there was just one URL or this tag or this, I'm sorry, this word fragment would exist in multiple URLs. Uh, for example, if I protected, I don't recommend this, but if I just put this in, well, obviously a slash is going to be seen in every URL. So if I put in a slash here, then that means the entire site requires level zero access because everything on the site would have that slash in it. So that's kind of a, a more general example that shows you the power of this. Okay, specific post page access restrictions. I'm going to skip this for now because I'm going to do a separate video on this section. Uh, this is an added layer of functionality which is very powerful and it extends S2 member beyond what it was originally intended to do which was to provide membership level access. Specific post page access allows you to sell buy now access to specific posts or pages or even to packages of multiple posts and pages where access to those after checkout does not require a membership login. So it's very powerful, but it's also uh, should be dedicated to a separate video. We'll discuss this again later. Moving on down to unique IP access restrictions. This feature allows S2 member to track how many different IPs are accessing a particular username on your site. So in other words, it prevents username and link sharing. For example, let's say tomorrow, you, after you've installed S2 member and you've watched these wonderful videos that I provide you with, you go out and you find a sale and you make $150 and a customer pays you and then that customer decides that they are going to make a blog entry on their own blog and share that username and password for the whole world to see. S2 member then, as people start logging in and abusing that username and password that one customer bought, S2 member will start looking at it and say, okay, well, five, more than five different IPs are accessing one username. And then whenever it reaches that five limit, then it will punish, it will consider that a security breach and punish that, that account, that specific username for one hour. So in other words, it prevents link sharing because this works, all you do is configure this here once and this is applied then to all aspects of S2 members protection, including file download access, uh, specific post page access, membership, username, all kinds of different methods that S2 provides, basic and advanced, are all tracked by this IP tracking system, and this is custom.